Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Tuesday, November 19th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, InfoWars prepares to take over the controlled narrative of the JFK assassination. Then, will you have to surrender biometrics just to leave your airport? And Bitcoin hits high and loses it in 30 minutes. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Don't talk about him. Don't listen to him. Listen, he's the kook saying the government can't be trusted. He's the kook saying there's tyranny. He's the kook saying they're buying billions of bullets. Well, as the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination approaches this Friday, the city of Dallas is in a ham-fisted way censoring any free speech, any skepticism about the official story. But we're not taking this lying down. Texans are going to be protesting the censorship of free speech in Dallas. On Wednesday, Alex Jones will kick off three days of demonstrations and protests at the Federal Reserve Building at the corner of Pearl and Woodall Rogers Freeway, a location he's previously demonstrated at three separate times with other Americans. We are not going to be pushed aside as they do at the political conventions into free speech zones. That is clearly unconstitutional. Look at the First Amendment. This is specifically protected speech under the First Amendment. The right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government with grievances. We have grievances. We have grievances about the official story. It does not honor the memory of JFK to not have a honest investigation, to cover up what other people have found, to shove these things aside, to pull out clues and hide them in the National Archives, to literally fill in concrete curbs where uh, shots were ricocheted off. This is something that was a seminal moment in American history. This is when people not only saw an American president shot live on television and then his alleged assassin shot uh, afterwards, this was also a time where we saw government cover-ups, government lies, government conspiracies being crafted in real time. Anyone who's alive remembers this. And it was a period of time when we learned that our government was capable of the same sorts of things that we see in banana republics that we saw in Nazi Germany. It was an important lesson, one that we must not forget. And I think it's interesting that just today we learned something about a Nazi assassination, a Nazi cover-up. We learned that Field Marshal Rommel, who was involved in a, an assassination plot against Hitler, was actually forced to commit suicide. Now, this happened back in 1944, and the doctor who was who falsified the report under threat of being killed by an SS officer, Dr. Friedrich Breiderhoff, actually made a report to the police in Cologne in 1960. He filed a seven-page report. He was bothered about the lie. He was bothered about the cover-up of the forced suicide. But this did not come to light until just now. So here we are 70 years later and these documents are coming out. The truth will eventually come out. Most of the documents that the government has about the JFK assassination are still sealed. They're still secretive, even after 50 years. And of course, there have been many, many, many witnesses who have died under unusual circumstances. So the truth is going to eventually come out. We've had deathbed confessions from people who said they were associated with it. We're going to find out what's happened there. People are going to investigate it. But the most important thing is that we not allow the government to censor our free speech. The New American reports that hacker Jeremy Hammond, who hacked Stratfor emails, has been sentenced to the maximum sentence of 10 years for his crime. Now, he slammed government crimes. He said that the U.S. government was deliberately allowing Mexican cartel assassins into the United States. This was glean from the Stratfor emails that were hacked. And in other explosive revelations from the massive hack, produced more evidence that federal authorities in the U.S. have been quietly supporting certain Mexican criminal empires, especially the Sinaloa drug cartel. Now, it's not to say that Hammond didn't commit crimes himself. He did expose credit card data. However, exposing these crimes, there will still be no prosecution of anyone, just as there was no prosecution at the NSA for what Snowden exposed. Instead, you see McCain and Feinstein and Lindsey Graham calling for his jail, his internment in jail, but nothing for anyone who has broken the law as a government employee. Now, in a similar story today, we had the father of Brittany Murphy allege that she was murdered because she was involved in a yet another government conspiracy, another government crime. 
similar in many ways to this story from Jeremy Hammond. Now, in this case, Mr. Bertolotti, her father, said that there were, in fact, under surveillance, including helicopters. Their telephones were wiretapped. Brittany was afraid to go home because of the sneak and peek incursions of the residents and other terror tactics that she suffered after speaking out in support of whistleblower Julia Davis and being named as a witness in her lawsuit against the Department of Homeland Security. Now, what Julia Davis was blowing the whistle on was the fact that she had spotted information that al-Qaeda terrorists were crossing the Mexican border. And Homeland Security was not doing anything about it, so she went to the FBI and they took recrimination against her. So we see that in the case of Hammond, there are Sinaloa drug assassins coming across the border. In the case of Davis and perhaps Brittany Murphy, we see a tale of al-Qaeda terrorists that are being allowed to cross the border by the government. And yet, we see that back in the spring, the HSBC money laundering scandal that Eric Holder decided not to prosecute anyone at HSBC about, it also involved these very same actors, the Sinaloa drug cartel, as well as Al-Qaeda. But of course, we were told that the bank was too big to jail, so they were just going to let that go along. They were going to pass on that prosecution. Perhaps there's a lot more to that than just the fact they're too big to jail, even though that's not much of an excuse to let them get away with committing these crimes that they've put other people behind jail for for many, many decades. Now, it was just yesterday that we learned about these detention pods that are being put in at the TSA. And while they may let terrorists and drug assassins freely cross across the border, understand that this is about you. This is about controlling your movement, your access, your exit even from the airports. Now we learn out more information today about these detention pods. We find out that they're going to be collecting biometric fingerprint data. Coming soon, biometric fingerprint scans just to leave the airport. The identity of the user, according to the company's website, is guaranteed via fingerprint iris or facial recognition scans before they're allowed to complete their passage from non-secure to secured areas. Well, they've already vetted you. They've already scanned you. If you're leaving the airport, supposedly you've already passed through all of their scans. And this is creating a very dangerous situation, just like the lines to get into the airport create a very dangerous situation for mass shootings, for bombings. You've got a lot of people masked at the entrance to the airport. Now, if there is a fire or if there's some other kind of disaster, people will not be allowed to quickly and safely exit the airport. But the main thing is that you understand that you are the slave of the TSA. The main thing is that they control everything about your movement and know everything about your movement. But don't laugh at this ridiculous charade. We were warned about that a couple of weeks ago. We had a recording from the Houston airport and we played that and did an article about it. We had one of our callers call in yesterday on the Alex Jones show and he actually questioned the TSA about their authority for threatening to jail people who joke about the TSA. Does the TSA have authority to do this? Jakari Jackson has a special report right after the show. Well, what is going on with Bitcoin? Now, a lot of people are looking for ways to escape the prying eyes of the federal government and its control, and so they're looking at alternative currencies or ways that they can store value or ways that they can move money out of the country. And so a lot of people are looking at Bitcoin, but we've seen wild fluctuations in volatil volatility over the last few days. Just back on Friday, it surged to $400. Then by Sunday, it was $500. Then by Monday, it went up to $600. And late Monday night, it got up to $900 and then dropped below $650 in just 30 minutes. So it dropped from $900 to $650 in just 30 minutes. Well, there have been hearings this week that involve the FBI, Homeland Security, even FinCEN. And they sound like they're supporting Bitcoin, like they're some kind of laissez-faire free market advocates. Listen to this quote from FinCEN. They said, whenever there's a new type of financial service or a new player in the financial industry, the first reaction by those of us who are concerned about money laundering is to think about the gaps and vulnerabilities. But it's also important we step back and recognize that innovation is a very important part of our economy. So what's going on here? As we see these wild fluctuations, are they pumping and dumping it? Are they trying to destroy confidence in Bitcoin? Are they trying to take it over? It's really not clear at this point what's going on. It's a very volatile situation. We'll be watching that carefully as people are looking for a safe haven for their money. 
Now, as they're manipulating Bitcoin, we have pointed out before that they also manipulate the employment figures. And now today we learned that that's official, that just before the election, they dropped the employment numbers below the magic 8% number just before they held the election. A lot of people called foul at the time. Now, at the time, the former CEO of GE, Jack Welch, tweeted, unbelievable job numbers. These Chicago guys will do anything. Now we learned today that at the Census Bureau, which does the unemployment survey, they knew that these numbers were manipulated. That's come out today. Now, the other thing that's happening is as we see the stock market going wild, as we see Bitcoin with these wild fluctuations, a lot of people have made money in the stock market, but people who are working for a living are seeing hard times. And nothing underscores that more than this story about Walmart employees. It was reported in kind of a real life Hunger Games event that they're collecting donations for Walmart employees that cannot afford a Thanksgiving dinner. A local news station reported that there are bins being set up in the employee area saying, please donate food items here so associates in need can enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. A very sad sign of the times and a sign that money is being sucked out of this country at an ever increasing rate by these large multinational corporations like Walmart. Now, people will say, I've got nothing to hide, and I don't mind the government listening to my electronic communications. But take a look at this video. Hi, I'm Jack Vale, and I wanted to see how easy it would be to get personal information from complete strangers. And while I'm at it, of course, freak them out a little bit. Keep in mind, when you watch this video, I got all of this information just by searching their personal social media posts. And I got it by searching for the closest Twitter, Instagram, and other social media posts to my current location. Are you Stephanie? Uh, how do you know me? How you doing? I'm Jack. Did you just make that up and you said that? No, Al Elena, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was just gonna say happy birthday. People get creeped out, as they should, when they realize how they're being listened to. And right after the break, Gigi Arnetta is going to have a report about how the NSA traps you in their spy net. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back, and here's a special report on how you can get involuntarily caught in the NSA spy net. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch. The latest on the spy state includes Los Angeles. There have been Aruba network routers spotted in various areas of L.A., 
Government entities are latching onto this surveillance technique for various reasons, but one of the biggest advantages to this mesh network is that it can be installed and removed quickly without reliance on a fixed infrastructure. Wireless mesh networks are ideal for temporary spy assignments. They can spy and roll. A mesh can be set up and used for monitoring and surveillance during an incident or public event and easily packed up and moved to the next location. Any organization can deploy a wireless mesh network in the unlicensed 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz band and U.S. public safety band. This mesh wireless system is a great addition to your already intrusive Xbox, which can catch you in various positions and videotape you and expose your personal junk. You thought the TSA was intrusive. At least you had to go to the airport to get violated. Now you can depend on the person who installs the mesh routers outside your home to aid in violating your rights. Another option is to give all your information to the navigators at healthcare.gov and willingly allow DHS, DOJ, IRS, and even the White House into your private information, or they can just steal it from you on the giant spy grid. Either way, the monstrosity being built in Utah is equipped to store it all for you. And the giant bureaucracy of the healthcare system, along with many other communistic agencies, can access your information and use it against you at will. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, stay tuned. Right after the break, we have an interview with a nurse who is being forced to take flu shots by the hospital he works for. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salads, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Tonight, PJ Sneed joins me. He's an RN at a Level 1 Trauma Center in Kansas, and he's dealing with some new vaccine regulations in his hospital. PJ, thank you so much for being on the InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's start with talking a little bit about your career and how you got to the point where you are now and what's going on with vaccinations. So you've been in the business now for 17 and a half years. You're an RN at a level right. one trauma center. What has taken place that's distinctly different? Um, at the beginning of the year, over the years as it's as progressed, uh, the vaccinations have gotten more um, per se mandated um, over the last, up until now, we've always had the option to wear either just to totally decline or you could wear the mask um, and, not, and not take the flu vaccination. This year, 
um, the first part of the year, July, August, they were still going to that same policy of uh, you could decline the flu, the, the flu vaccination, but you would have to wear the mask um, no matter what. And about late August, early September, uh, they changed their policy mandating, saying that we will be mandatory to re, uh, receive the flu vaccination um, or and or get to you can get a medical exemption or religious exemption. Okay, and usually you guys get different types of vaccinations, right? You get them for hepatitis and different things. Correct, yeah, it's, and normally you, just, you have those coming into the field. Most of those those are already, you know, like your hep V, uh, you, you will already have, or, you know, three, and they're something that you don't get updated on a annual basis or like if you would have a exposure or needle stick or they would test you to see and make sure your your titer is good but uh, it, normally on an annual basis it's just the flu the flu vaccination is what they push and what do they say when it comes to vaccinations what's the reason that they're saying you need to have a flu vaccination uh, it, first and foremost they, they've really pushed for uh, to protect uh, our, our patients um, I think is probably their first and foremost their priority but uh, is I would say is probably number one number two is to protect ourselves from since we're kind of a first front front line I work in a trauma center um, and first and foremost protect the patient and then protect us from them also Okay, well, let's go forward a little bit more and let's look at the documentation right now about vaccinations and, and what they've given you. And it's a general CDC uh, vaccination document that talks about reasons why you should get the vaccine or what the CDC claims that you should. Correct, yeah, that's, and, and that's most places, even uh, your local Walgreens or Costco or whoever's given the vaccine, vaccination, most places, probably 90 Ninety percent. I know our Walgreens uh, uses the same, the same form too. So they say influenza vaccine. The things that you need to know. The number one thing that they're claiming is that it's contagious and you get chills and all the symptoms of the flu vaccine. What it seems to be leaving out is the fact that they're injecting you with this and you're going to more than likely get sick if you take it. I, I think a lot of people have that issue. Um, you know, it's uh, I, I I have taken it in the past, but through the years of of uh, older, wiser, um, I you know have chosen not to. Um, and a lot of people do have issues with uh, the, the the so-called side effects, and even to the point of uh, last year, we had an employee um, in in my facility that, uh, and it wasn't mandated, but he went ahead and received the flu vaccination and he actually came down with Guillain-Barre. Um, thank goodness he recovered from it, but, uh, wow. that can be a very lethal, uh, illness. Wow. And, and it's supposed to be a one in two million, one in a million, uh, for the sheet. I think that you're looking at, I think that's like a one in a million chance of happening supposedly, but yet we had an employee come down with it. Does, did he normally take the flu vaccine? I don't know his history personally. Um, I would assume so. Um, I, I think he was an, actually a respiratory therapist, uh, but uh, it, my assumption would be yes, he probably does take it, you know, had, had taken it before, um, that, but I'm just assuming that. I, I don't know his, his whole story of if he's taken it before. Or... Okay, well it does say in here that it does have thimerosal, at least they admit that. Yes, that's, that's, but they, but they note they don't they don't tell you what it is though, and and even the sheet that they passed around work too that they said we'll have the the thimerosal free uh, version of it, but you have to go to the the health resource uh, office to get it. We'd have roving carts that would have the uh, the thimerosal um, in it, but uh, they would not tell you what the unless you asked. They would not tell you what the thimerosal is. They just said that thimerosal is in it. Okay, so the real problem right now is that you've claimed on on the paperwork that they have, they say you can claim a religious exemption, and that's what you did. And or medical, yes. And or medical. In your case, you actually did the, the religious. Yes, ma'am. And what's the latest as of date? Um, I, I was denied. Um, as you can see, the, the, the paperwork I showed you, uh, I was denied the first round. I spoke with uh, a higher-up um, 
well, I spoke with my immediate supervisor first, and he forwarded me on to someone of the committee. I kind of wanted to know the process of how they were picking and choosing exemptions. Uh, uh, and so I spoke with one lady, and she basically, for the form there, it says that you, you can see it says uh, for, cler for your clergyman to fill out. And so that's what I did, and they filled, out, they filled it out, and I submitted my form and, and was pleasantly denied. Um, so she forwarded me on to a second lady, and I just had a conversation yesterday, actually, um, and kind of to, to go into more depth of, of explaining, you know, you know, I didn't, if, if we were supposed to give our opinion and more faith-based, you know, reasons, um, they didn't give us that opportunity. So we gave, I, over the phone, gave that to her yesterday, and I'm actually was waiting on, on your interview with you, and uh, to send an email back on, on that she's going to submit, resubmit to the Grand Poobah Committee uh, of uh, acceptance or denial. It sounds almost like you had to give a, a deposition of sorts. Most definitely. It, it, it was, uh, um, you know, just constantly, you know, well, well, what do you, what do you take for this if you get sick or if you get a cold or... It, it, it was a deposition and, and a slash interrogation, most definitely. So what would be the best solution for you personally? Uh, me personally, just to accept, I mean, first and foremost, I, I thought I was covered from, I, I think it's to quote it, the 1964 Discrimination Act against uh, uh, handicap and, and uh, religious um, in the workplace. I thought I would be protected that on, alone, um, let alone the First Amendment. Um, but uh, obviously that's not the case and you have to kind of fight for it, I guess. Well, you know, it definitely sounds like a case of tyranny. They, they're they saying, well, you can opt out, but no, not, not really. And, yeah, and they're pushing and it. <laughs> and we've not, I've not heard of one, one uh, there was multiple people on our floor that, that filed for exemptions, um, either or, and, and even throughout the hospital and, you know, just through word of mouth, people that go around to other floors and, and I've not heard of one acceptance of, of uh, whether it's a medical or, or religious um, exemption. They've already given you the opportunity to opt out on paper. It seems like they need to follow through with that. And whether it's medical or whether it is religious, when you say you're going to do something, they should, number exactly. one, on top exactly. of the fact of the Constitution. That should yeah, be number one, but <laughs> and I haven't mentioned that yet. And I, I'm, you know, I've 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 been kind of nice to the point of, you know, I'll, I'll jump through the hoops and and, but you know, I, I, you know, first and foremost, you know, the first the First Amendment and and then the 1964 Discrimination Act. So I, I Article Seven, I think, is is to be more specific, but. Well, well, PJ, thank you so much for being on the show. We'd like to hear what happens and what the outcome is. I I will keep you updated. And you can catch PJ on his Twitter page at sleeper6 underscore nine. And you can reach him there if you want to talk to him about vaccinations and keep up with his news. And don't forget to sign up for prisonplanet.tv today. You can sign up and give your username and password to up to 10 people. Remember to join us here at 7 Central. I'm Gigi Arnetta for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Do not be persuaded by strangers or individuals you do not know well to take articles aboard your flight. You are also reminded that any inappropriate remarks or jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. We appreciate your cooperation while these measures are in effect. Let's talk to John in Oklahoma. John, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Then we're going to go to Cupcake. Welcome, John. Hey, uh, just uh, got off the phone with TSA after after uh, getting re-fired up about the little uh, detention pods and asked them about the uh, security announcement that they played there in Houston and uh, just to find out what the guidelines were. And, and it ended up, I recorded the conversation, it ended up that uh, they uh, really don't have any guidelines. It's pretty much up to the officer's discretion. Thank you for contacting TSA. 
Please stay on the line for the next available customer service representative. Thank you for holding. Now, the information that I have, um, I don't have, like, you know, of course, specific things that you can or cannot say. Um, I mean, if you decline screening or refuse to complete screening process, or, I mean, and a federal regulation prohibits interfering with, assaulting, threatening, or intimidating screening personnel as they perform their screening duties. I mean, you could be fined up to $1,500 and, you know, serve a, you may receive a civil penalty. Um, I mean, I, I highly don't suggest that you do that. Well, you know, I guess it, it just seems kind of, uh, I guess there's really no guidelines then. It's just kind of up to whatever screener, if he doesn't like. I mean, it, uh, of course, it's going to be up to the officer. I mean, if you're making... But they're not an officer. They're a, they're a screener. They're not an officer, or even though they call no, them officer. No, they're a transportation security administration officer. Oh, okay. They just don't have the ability to arrest somebody. They okay. do have the ability to detain and officers to do respond. Okay. Um, and you may be... You know, you can receive a civil penalty up to fifteen hundred dollars. Um, that's if you refuse to cooperate, uh, if you threaten, assault, interfere, or intimidate personnel as they do their duties. Then, yeah, you can receive that penalty. Now, that that would be reasonable for anyone. I mean, I couldn't assault or do anything to a regular citizen, much less a, a government person. Um, okay. Uh, so there really aren't any guidelines? I mean, there's not, like, specifics that you can't or can say to an officer. It's basically if they feel that you're doing any intimidating or assaulting or threatening or anything. Well, the announcement, says, the announcement says jokes. You are also reminded that any inappropriate remarks or jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. Okay, what would be an example of that? An example? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, sir. Okay. I mean, if you say that you're going to blow up an airplane, or, <laughs> you know, you can't joke like that. That's something you can't joke about. Joke, even though it may be a joke, that's something that they take serious. Okay. All right, but if you, if you say some comment about, like, uh, you know, we're living in a police state or anything like that, what would they think about? Like I said, I, that's, I mean, if the officer seems that you're interfering or intimidating them, then they can absolutely, you know, serve you with that civil penalty. Okay. Now, what was the arrest part about? What, what are you, is, that's a criminal charge. So what would they be charging someone with? I, I don't have the specifics on what you can and can't say to an officer. Okay, so it's pretty wide open then. I just don't, if they don't like the way you cut your hair, they can say you said something to them that they didn't like and in find you? I'm not sure that that's what I meant by that, sir. I, I, it, it's, not, it's not based on what they think you look like. It's what you're doing. Uh-huh. Okay. All righty. Well, I guess that answers as good as I can get. So there's really no guidelines on there as to what's going to what's going to put you in jail there's no real law against freedom of speech i don't think you know obviously you can't um, you can't, you can't like yell said, fire if, in a crowded if they theater think that you're interfering or assaulting or threatening or intimidating it's going to be up to them okay and there is surveillance i mean it's to back it you know i mean it's just it's whatever they think i i suppose that I, I i don't have information on what will set them off or you know, um, but that's all the information that I have. Okay. Well, I appreciate the, uh, the, the time. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. This is literal intimidation now. If you make a joke, if you say you don't like something, we're going to arrest you. Well, I say then let them do it. Let's go to court. Let's sue everybody. This is the new civil rights movement. They are trying to treat us all like slaves. We are going back into slavery. Everyone is going into slavery. That's what governments always try to do. It's happening now.